The Seattle Supersonics, commonly known as the Sonics, were an American professional basketball team based in Seattle, Washington. The Supersonics played in the National Basketball Association NBA as a member club of the league's Western Conference Pacific and Northwest Divisions from 1967 until 2008. After the 2007–08 season ended, the team relocated to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and now plays as the Oklahoma City Thunder. Sam Schulman owned the team from its 1967 inception until 1983. It was then owned by Barry Ackerley 1983 and then Basketball Club of Seattle, headed by Starbucks chairman emeritus, former president and CEO Howard Schultz 2001 on July 18, 2006, the Basketball Club of Seattle sold the Supersonics and its Women's National Basketball Association WNBA sister franchise Seattle Storm to the Professional Basketball Club LLC, headed by Oklahoma City businessman Clay Bennett. The sale was approved by the NBA Board of Governors on October 24, 2006, and finalized on October 31, 2006, at which point the new ownership group took control. After failing to find public funding to construct a new arena in the Seattle area, the Supersonics moved to Oklahoma City before the 2008–09 season, following a $45 million settlement with the City of Seattle to pay off the team's existing lease at Key Arena at Seattle Center in advance of its 2010 expiration. Home games were played at Key Arena, originally known as Seattle Center Coliseum, for 33 of the franchise's 41 seasons in Seattle. In 1978, the team moved to the Kingdome, which was shared with the Seattle Mariners of Major League Baseball MLB and the Seattle Seahawks of the National Football League NFL. They returned to the Coliseum full-time in 1985, moving temporarily to the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington, for the 1994–95 season while the Coliseum was renovated and rebranded as Key Arena. The Supersonics won the NBA championship in 1979. Overall, the franchise won three Western Conference titles, 1978, 1979, and 1996. The franchise also won six divisional titles, their last being in 2005, with five in the Pacific Division and one in the Northwest Division. Settlement terms of a lawsuit between the City of Seattle and Clay Bennett's ownership group stipulated the Supersonics banners, trophies, and retired jerseys remain in Seattle. The nickname, logo, and color scheme are available to any subsequent NBA team that plays at a renovated key arena subject to NBA approval. The Supersonics franchise history, however, would be shared with the Thunder. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Franchise history. Topic: <laughs> 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 Team creation. On December 20, 1966, Los Angeles businessmen Sam Schulman and Eugene V. Klein, who both owned the AFL's San Diego Chargers at the time, and a group of minority partners were awarded an NBA franchise for the city of Seattle. Schulman would serve as the active partner and head of team operations. He named the Supersonics after Boeing's recently awarded contract for the SST project, which was later cancelled. The Supersonics were Seattle's first major league sports franchise. 
Beginning play on October 13, 1967, the Supersonics were coached by Al Bianchi and featured All-Star guard Walt Hazard and NBA All-Rookie team members Bob Rule and Al Tucker. The expansion team stumbled out of the gates with a 144–116 loss in their first game in San Francisco against the San Francisco Warriors. The team got their first win on October 21, their third game of the season in San Diego against the San Diego Rockets in overtime 117–110, and finished the season with a 23–59 record. Topic. 1968–1975, the Lenny Wilkins era Hazard was traded to the Atlanta Hawks before the start of the next season for Lenny Wilkins. Wilkins brought a strong all-around game to the Supersonics, averaging 22.4 points, 8.2 assists, and 6.2 rebounds per game for Seattle in the 1968–69 season. Rule, meanwhile, improved on his rookie statistics with 24.0 points per game and 11.5 rebounds per game. The Supersonics, however, only won 30 games and Bianchi was replaced by Wilkins as player, coach during the offseason. Wilkins and Rule both represented Seattle in the 1970 NBA All-Star Game, and Wilkins led the NBA in assists during the 1969–70 season. In June 1970 the NBA owners voted 13-4 to work toward a merger with the ABBA, Supersonics owner Sam Schulman, a member of the ABBA NBA merger committee in 1970, was so ardently eager to merge the leagues that he publicly announced that if the NBA did not accept the merger agreement worked out with the ABBA, he would move the Supersonics from the NBA to the ABBA. Schulman also threatened to move his soon-to-be ABBA team to Los Angeles to compete directly with the Lakers. The Oscar Robertson suit delayed the merger, and the Supersonics remained in Seattle. Early in the 1970–71 season, however, Rule tore his Achilles tendon and was lost for the rest of the year. Topic. Arrival of Spencer Haywood Wilkins was named the 1971 All-Star Game MVP, but the big news of the season came when owner Sam Schulman managed to land American Basketball Association Rookie of the Year and MVP Spencer Haywood following a lengthy court battle see Haywood v. National Basketball Association. The following season, the Supersonics went on to record their first winning season at 47–35. The team, led by player-coach Wilkins and first-team forward Haywood, held a 46–27 mark on March 3, but late-season injuries to starters Haywood, Dick Snyder, and Don Smith contributed to the team losing eight of its final nine games, otherwise, the 1971–72 team might have become the franchise's first playoff team. For the 1972–73 season, Wilkins was dealt to Cleveland in a highly unpopular trade, and without his leadership the Supersonics fell to a 26–56 record. One of the few bright spots of the season was Haywood's second consecutive All-NBA first-team selection, as he averaged a Supersonics record 29.2 points per game and collected 12.9 rebounds per game. Topic. 1975–1983, the championship years 
The legendary Bill Russell was hired as the head coach in the following year, and in 1975 he coached the Supersonics to the playoffs for the first time. The team, which starred Haywood, guards Fred Brown and Slick Watts, and rookie center Tommy Burleson, defeated the Detroit Pistons in a three-game miniseries before falling to the eventual champion Golden State Warriors in six games. The next season, the Supersonics traded Haywood to New York forcing the remaining players to pick up the offensive slack. Guard Fred Brown, now in his fifth season, was selected to the 1976 NBA All-Star Game and finished fifth in the league in scoring average and free throw percentage. Burleson's game continued to strengthen, while Watts led the NBA in both assists and steals and was named to the All-NBA Defensive First Team. The Supersonics again made the playoffs, but lost to the Phoenix Suns in six games in spite of strong performances from both Brown .5 PPG and Burleson .8 PPG during the series. Russell left the Supersonics after the 1976–77 season, and under new coach Bob Hopkins the team started the season dismally at 5–17. Lenny Wilkins was brought back to replace Hopkins, and the team's fortunes immediately turned around. The Supersonics won 11 of their first 12 games under Wilkins, finished the season at 47–35, won the Western Conference title, and led the Washington Bullets three games to two before losing in seven games in the 1978 NBA Finals. Other than the loss of center Marvin Webster to New York, the Supersonics roster stayed largely intact during the offseason, and in the 1978–79 season they went on to win their first division title. In the playoffs, the Supersonics defeated the Phoenix Suns in a tough seven-game conference final series to set up a rematch with the Washington Bullets in the finals. This time, the Bullets lost to the Supersonics in five games to give Seattle its first, and only, NBA title. The championship team roster included the powerful backcourt tandem of Gus Williams and Finals MVP Dennis Johnson, second-year All-Star center Jack Siegma, forwards John Johnson and Lonnie Shelton, and key reserves Fred Brown and Paul Silas. The 1979–80 season saw the Supersonics finish second in the Pacific Division to the Los Angeles Lakers with a strong 56–26 record. Fred Brown won the NBA's first three-point shooting percentage title, Jack Siegma played in the second of his seven career All-Star games for Seattle, Gus Williams and Dennis Johnson were both named to the All-NBA second team, and Johnson was also named to the All-NBA first defensive team for the second consecutive year. The Supersonics made it to the Western Conference Finals for the third straight season, but lost to the Lakers in five games. It was the last time that the backcourt of Williams and Johnson would play together in Supersonics uniforms, as Johnson was traded to the Phoenix Suns before the start of the 1980–81 season and Williams sat out the year due to a contract dispute. As a result, the Supersonics fell to last place in the Pacific Division with a 34–48 mark, so far the only time they have ever finished in last place. Williams returned for the 1981–82 season, and Seattle managed respectable 52–30 and 48–34 records during the next two years. In 1981, the Sonics also created the Sonics Super Channel, the first sports subscription cable service. Subscriptions were available for $120, $1.33 a game. 
It shut down after the 1984–85 season. Topic: 1983 to 1989, a period of decline. In October 1983, original team owner Sam Schulman sold the Supersonics to Barry Ackerley, initiating a period of decline and mediocrity for the franchise. In 1984, Fred Brown retired after playing 13 productive seasons, all with Seattle. His career reflected much of the Supersonics' history to that time because he had been on the same team roster as Rule and Wilkins during his rookie season, playing a key role on Seattle's first playoff teams, and being the team's important sixth man during the championship series years. In recognition of his many contributions to the team, Brown's number was retired in 1986. Lenny Wilkins left the organization following the 1984–85 season, and when Jack Siekma was traded after the 1985–86 season, the last remaining tie to the Supersonics championship team aside from trainer Frank Furtado had been severed. Among the few Supersonics highlights of second half of the 1980s were Tom Chambers' All-Star Game MVP award in 1987, Seattle's surprise appearance in the 1987 Western Conference Finals, despite posting a 39-43 regular season record during the 1986–87 season, and the performance of the power trio of Chambers, Xavier McDaniel. Daniel, and Dale Ellis. In 1987–88, the three players each averaged over 20 points per game with Ellis at 25.8 ppg, McDaniel at 21.4, and Chambers at 20.4. In the 1988–89 season, with Chambers having signed with Phoenix, Ellis improved his scoring average to 27.5 points per game and finished second in the league in three-point percentage. The Supersonics finished with a 47–35 record, and made it to the second round of the 1989 playoffs. Topic 1989 to 1998, the Peyton Kemp era. The Supersonics began setting a new foundation with the drafting of forward Sean Kemp in 1989 and guard Gary Payton in 1990, and the trading of Dale Ellis and Xavier McDaniel to other teams during the 1990–91 season. It was George Carl's arrival as head coach in 1992, however, that marked a return to regular season and playoff competitiveness for the Supersonics. With the continued improvement of Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, the Supersonics posted a 55–27 record in the 1992–93 season and took the Phoenix Suns to seven games in the Western Conference Finals. The next year, 1993–94, the Supersonics had the best record in the NBA at 63–19, but suffered a first-round loss to the Denver Nuggets, becoming the first number one seed to lose a playoff series to an eighth seed. The Sonics moved to the Tacoma Dome for the 1994–95 season while the Coliseum underwent renovations and went on to earn a second-place 57–25 record. Again, the Sonics were eliminated in the first round, this time to the Los Angeles Lakers in four games. The team returned to the rebuilt Coliseum, renamed Key Arena for the 1995–96 season. Perhaps the strongest roster the Supersonics ever had was the 1995–96 team, which had a franchise-best 64–18 record. 
With a deep roster of all NBA second team selections Kemp and Payton, forward Detlef Schrempf, forward Sam Perkins, guard Hersey Hawkins, and guard Nate McMillan, the team reached the NBA Finals, but lost to the Michael Jordan-led Chicago Bulls in six games. Seattle continued to be a Western Conference powerhouse during the next two seasons, winning 57 games in 1996–97 and 61 games in 1997–98 for their second and third straight Pacific Division titles. At the end of the 1997–98 season longtime Sonic and defensive specialist Nate McMillan retired, and disagreements with management led Carl to end his tenure as head coach. He was replaced by former Sonic Paul Westfall for the 1998–99 season. Topic. 1998–2008, a decade of struggles The 1998–99 season saw the Supersonics struggle. Westfall was fired during the 2001 season and replaced by then assistant coach Nate McMillan on an interim basis, eventually losing the «interim» label the next year. The 2002–03 season saw All-Star Gary Payton traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, and it also marked the end to the Supersonics' 11-year streak of having a season with a winning percentage of at least .500, the second longest current streak in the NBA at the time. The 2004–05 team surprised many when it won the organization's sixth division title under the leadership of Ray Allen and Richard Lewis, winning 52 games and defeating the Sacramento Kings to advance to the 2005 Western Conference semifinals. The Sonics would proceed to lose in six games to the established trio of Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, and Manu Ginobili and the San Antonio Spurs, who subsequently defeated the Detroit Pistons in the 2005 NBA Finals. This appearance also marked the last time that this incarnation of the Supersonics would make the playoffs. During the offseason in 2005, head coach Nate McMillan left the Sonics to accept a high-paying position to coach the Portland Trail Blazers. After his departure, the team regressed the following season with a 35-47 record. Topic: 2007-08 Arrival of Kevin Durant. On May 22, 2007, the Supersonics were awarded the second pick in the 2007 NBA draft, equaling the highest draft position the team has ever held. They selected Kevin Durant from the University of Texas. On June 28, 2007, the Supersonics traded Ray Allen and the 35th pick of the second round Glenn Davis in the 2007 NBA draft to the Boston Celtics for rights to the fifth pick Jeff Green, Wally Serbiak, and Delant West. On July 11, 2007, the Supersonics and the Orlando Magic agreed to a sign and trade for Richard Lewis. The Supersonics received a future second-round draft pick and a $9.5 million trade exception from the Magic. On July 20 the Supersonics used the trade exception and a second round draft pick to acquire Kurt Thomas and two first round draft picks from the Phoenix Suns. In 2008, morale was low at the beginning of the Supersonics season as talks with the city of Seattle for a new arena had broken down. The Sonics had gotten a franchise player with second overall pick in the NBA draft with Durant. 
However, with the Allen trade the Sonics did not have much talent to surround their rookie forward, as they lost their first eight games under coach P.J. Carlesimo on the way to a 3–14 record in the first month of the season. Durant would live up to expectations, as he led all rookies in scoring at 20.3 ppg and won the Rookie of the Year. However, the Seattle Supersonics posted a franchise worst record of 20-62. It would end up being the final season in Seattle as Bennett ended up getting the rights to move the team after settling all the legal issues with the city. Topic. Relocation to Oklahoma City From 2001 to 2006, Starbucks chairman emeritus, former president and CEO Howard Schultz was the majority owner of the team, along with 58 partners or minor owners, as part of the Basketball Club of Seattle LLP. On July 18, 2006, Schultz sold the Supersonics and its sister team, the Women's National Basketball Association WNBA's Seattle Storm, to the Professional Basketball Club LLC PBC, a group of businessmen from Oklahoma City for $350 million. The team relocated to Oklahoma City in 2008, and now plays as the Oklahoma City Thunder. In 2006, after unsuccessful efforts to persuade Washington state government officials to provide funding to update Key Arena, the Basketball Club of Seattle LLP, led by Howard Schultz, sold the team to the Professional Basketball Club LLC PBC, an investment group headed by Oklahoma City businessman Clay Bennett. The purchase, at US$350 million, also included the Seattle Storm WNBA franchise. Schultz sold the franchise to Bennett's group because they thought that Bennett would not move the franchise to Oklahoma City but instead keep it in Seattle. Oklahoma City Mayor Mick Cornett was quoted as saying, I think it's presumptuous to assume that Clay Bennett and his ownership group won't own that Seattle team for a long, long time in Seattle or somewhere else. It's presumptuous to assume they're going to move that franchise to Oklahoma City," Cornett said. I understand that people are going to say that seems to be a likely scenario, but that's just speculation. After failing to persuade local governments to fund a $500 million arena complex in the Seattle suburb of Renton, Bennett's group notified the National Basketball Association NBA that it intended to move the team to Oklahoma City and requested arbitration with the city of Seattle to be released from the Sonics lease with Key Arena. When the request was rejected by a judge, Seattle sued Bennett's group to enforce the lease that required the team to play in Key Arena through 2010. NBA owners gave approval of a potential Supersonics relocation to Oklahoma City on April 18 in a 28 2 vote by the league's Board of Governors. Only Mark Cuban of the Dallas Mavericks and Paul Allen of the Portland Trail Blazers voted against against the move. The approval meant the Sonics would be allowed to move to Oklahoma City's Ford Center for the 2008–09 season after reaching a settlement with the city of Seattle. On July 2, 2008, a settlement was reached that allowed the team to move under certain conditions, including the ownership group's payment of $45 million to Seattle and the possibility of an additional $30 million by 2013. 13 if a new team had not been awarded to the city. 
It was agreed that the Supersonics name would not be used by the Oklahoma City team and that the team's history would be shared between Oklahoma City and any future NBA team in Seattle. The team began play as the Oklahoma City Thunder for the 2008–09 NBA season, after becoming the third NBA franchise to relocate in the past decade. The two previous teams to relocate were the Vancouver Grizzlies, which moved to Memphis, Tennessee and began play as the Memphis Grizzlies for the 2001–02 NBA season, and the Charlotte Hornets, which moved to New Orleans and began play as the New Orleans Hornets for the 2002–03 NBA season. In months prior to the settlement, Seattle publicly released email conversations that took place within Bennett's ownership group and alleged that they indicated at least some members of the group had a desire to move the team to Oklahoma City prior to the purchase in 2006. Before that, Sonics co-owner Aubrey McClendon told the Journal Record, an Oklahoma City newspaper, that we didn't buy the team to keep it in Seattle, we hoped to come here." Although Bennett denied knowledge of this. Seattle used these incidents to argue that the ownership failed to negotiate in good faith, prompting Schultz to file a lawsuit seeking to rescind the sale of the team and transfer the ownership to a court-appointed receiver. The NBA claimed Schultz' lawsuit was void because Schultz signed a release forbidding himself to sue Bennett's group, but also argued that the proposal would have violated league ownership rules. Schultz dropped the case before the start of the 2008–09 NBA season. In 2009, Seattle area filmmakers called the Seattle Supersonics Historical Preservation Society produced a critically acclaimed documentary film titled Sonics Gate: Requiem for a Team that details the rise and demise of the Seattle Supersonics franchise. The movie focuses on the more scandalous aspects of the team's departure from Seattle, and it won the 2010 Webby Award for Best Sports Film. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Possible new franchise. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sacramento Kings. In 2011, a group of investors led by Valiant Capital Management hedge fund founder Chris Hansen spoke with then Seattle Mayor Mike McGinn about the possibilities of investing in an arena in hopes of securing an NBA franchise and reviving the Supersonics. An offer was made by McGinn to Hansen to obtain ownership of Key Arena for little to no money to aid in his efforts. As Key Arena was deemed unacceptable by the NBA and barely breaking even in operation, the facility would likely have needed to be leveled and a new one built on the site. Determining there were transportation concerns in the Lower Queen Anne neighborhood around the Seattle Center, Hansen declined in favor of building a new arena at another location. Hansen began quietly purchasing available land near Safeco Field in Seattle's Soto Industrial neighborhood, at the southern end of what was designated a stadium transition overlay district housing, both Safeco Field home of the ML. B Seattle Mariners and CenturyLink Field home of the NFL's Seattle Seahawks and MLS's Seattle Sounders. A short time later, Hansen presented to McGinn and King County executive Dow Constantine the proposal for a basketball, hockey, and entertainment arena at the Soto site. McGinn employed a stadium consultant on the city's behalf to study the viability of such a project. Local media took notice of the land purchases and began to postulate that it was for an arena. 
rumors of meetings between McGinn and Hansen's investment group began to circulate in late 2011 and were finally acknowledged in early 2012. At that time, rumors that Hansen would begin pursuing a vulnerable franchise to relocate to Seattle began making the rounds. Most of the discussion centered on the Sacramento Kings, a struggling franchise that had been trying to put together a plan to replace the aging Sleep Train Arena, then called the Power Balance Pavilion, for years with no luck. While Hansen had not spoken in public about his desires or pursuits for a specific team, the rumors were rampant enough that Think Big Sacramento, a community action group created by Sacramento Mayor Kevin Johnson to develop solutions for the Kings, composed an open letter to Hansen asking him not to pursue the city's team. Meanwhile, negotiations between McGinn, Constantine, and Hansen continued on development of a memorandum of understanding that would lay out the relationship for a public private partnership on the new arena. On May 16, 2012, after coming to agreement, McGinn, Constantine, and Hansen presented the proposed memorandum of understanding to the public. McGinn and Constantine had insisted on a number of protections for the citizens of Seattle and King County, specifically that no public financing on the project would be committed until Hansen and his investors had secured an NBA team to be primary tenant. The Mo proposal included a financial model that made the project self-financed in which no new taxes would be levied to provide funds and city bonds issued would be paid back by taxes and revenue generated solely by the new arena. The proposal was turned over to the Seattle City Council and the King County Council for review and approval. The King County Council voted to approve the MO on July 30, 2012, adding amendments that provided for work with the Port of Seattle, securing the Supersonics' naming rights, offering reduced price tickets, support for the Seattle Storm WNBA franchise, and require an economic analysis. The approval was also on the condition that any changes made by the Seattle City Council, which still had yet to vote on the proposal, would need to be voted on and approved separately. The Seattle Council had announced that morning that amendments of their own were intended and negotiations began. Hansen and the Seattle City Council announced on September 11, 2012, a tentative agreement on a revised MO that included the County Council's amendments and new provisions, specifically a personal guarantee from Hansen to cover not only cost overruns of construction of the new arena but to make make up any backfall for annual repayment of the city bonds issued. To address concerns of the Port of Seattle, the Seattle Mariners, and local industry, a SOTO transportation improvement fund to be maintained at $40 million by tax revenue generated by the arena was also included. Also, all parties agreed that transaction documents would not be signed and construction would not begin before the state required environmental impact analysis was completed. By a vote of 7-2, the Seattle City Council approved the amended MO on September 24, 2012. The King County Council reviewed the amended MO and voted unanimously in favor of approval on October 15, 2012. The final MO was signed and fully executed by Mayor McGinn and Executive Constantine on October 18, 2012, starting an effective period of the agreement of five years. In June 2012, it was revealed that Hansen's investment partners included then Microsoft CEO Steve Baumer and brothers Eric and Peter Nordstrom of fashion retailer Nordstrom, Inc. Peter Nordstrom had been a minor minority owner of the Supersonics under Howard Schultz's ownership. 
Wally Walker, former Sonics executive, was also later revealed to be part of Hansen's group. On January 9, 2013, media reports surfaced regarding the imminent sale of majority ownership of the Sacramento Kings to Hansen, Balmer, the Nordstroms, and Walker for $500 million to relocate to Seattle as early as the 2013 14 NBA season. On January 20, 2013, several sources reported that the Maloof family had reached a binding purchase purchase and sale agreement to sell Hansen and Balmer's ownership group their 53% majority stake in the Kings franchise, pending approval of the NBA's Board of Governors. The next day, the NBA, Hansen, and the Maloofs all released statements announcing the agreement, which also included the 12% minority stake of owner Robert Hernreich, and based the sale price on a team valuation of $525 million. Sacramento Mayor Johnson offered a quick rebuttal to the announcement, stating that the agreement was not a done deal and that Sacramento would have the opportunity to present a counteroffer to the NBA. David Stern, then NBA commissioner, confirmed on February 6, 2013, that the Maloofs had filed paperwork with the league office to officially request relocation of the Kings from Sacramento to Seattle on behalf of the potential new ownership group. Johnson, with guidance from Stern and the NBA League office, began to assemble an alternative ownership group that would keep the Kings in Sacramento and aid in getting a new arena constructed. On February 26, 2013, the Sacramento City Council voted to enter into negotiations with an unnamed group of investors revealed two days later to be headed by grocery magnate and developer Ron Burkle and Mark Mastrov, founder of 24 Hour Fitness. An initial counteroffer presented to the NBA by this new group was deemed not comparable. As to merit consideration, Burkle eventually left the group because of a conflict with other business interests, but offered to be primary developer of lands around the planned downtown location of the new arena to aid in City Council passage of public funding for the project. Mastrov took a backseat to Vivek Ranadive, founder and CEO of Tibco and a minority owner of the Golden State Warriors, brought in to assemble a stronger group of investors. Others, including Paul Jacobs, CEO of Qualcomm, Sacramento developer Mark Friedman, former Facebook executive Chris Kelly, and manufacturer Raj Bothell, were added to the group to address team ownership and arena investment, ahead of the annual Board of Governors meeting where they were expected to vote on approval of the sale of the Kings to Hansen and Balmer's group, as well as the relocation request. Members of the NBA Owners Finance and Relocation Committees held a meeting in New York City on April 3, 2013, for the Seattle Group and the Sacramento Group to each present their proposals. Any vote would only be on the PSA presented by Hansen and Balmer, and the Sacramento proposal was considered a backup offer. Coming out of that meeting, the NBA removed the vote from the agenda of the BOG meeting and postponed it for two weeks while information was reviewed. Despite stated desires to the contrary, a bidding war began between Hansen's and Ranadive's groups, including Hansen raising the team valuation of their offer twice from $525 million to $550 million to $625 million, and Ranadive offering to forego the team revenue sharing that has frequently kept smaller market teams like the Kings financial financially stable, with the meeting of the Board of Governors to vote moved again to mid-May, the groups were asked to make another brief presentation to the full relocation committee on April 29, 2013. 
The committee voted to recommend rejection of the relocation request to the full board. When the Board of Governors finally convened in Dallas on May 15, 2013, they heard final presentations from both the Seattle and Sacramento groups. The BOG voted 22-8 against moving the Kings from Sacramento to Seattle. As the PSA for the sale of the team was, for all intents and purposes, dependent upon relocation, the NBA rejected the sale without vote, though initially resistant to the idea. After negotiations, on May 17, 2013, the Maloof family and Hern Reich formally agreed to sell their ownership stake in the Kings, 65% of the team, valued at 535 million units. United States dollars to Ranadive's ownership group. Part of the $348 million purchase was considered paid with a $30 million non-refundable deposit Chris Hansen had paid to the Maloofs to establish their business relationship, though Hansen has no ownership stake in the team. Milwaukee Bucks In September 2013, then Deputy Commissioner Adam Silver, in line to become the next commissioner upon David Stern's retirement in February 2014, made the announcement that the Milwaukee Bucks would need to replace the aging BMO Harris Bradley Center because of its small size and lack of amenities. The team had recently signed a lease through the 2016–17 NBA season, but the NBA made it clear that the lease would not be renewed past that point. With counties surrounding Milwaukee passing ordinances that they would not approve a regional tax option to fund a new arena, rumors began swirling that owner Herb Cole would need to sell all or part of his ownership of the team. Though Cole had repeatedly stated he would not sell to someone intent on moving the Bucks out of Wisconsin, many had pegged the team as a likely potential candidate to move to Seattle. On April 16, 2014, it was announced that Cole had agreed to sell the franchise to New York hedge fund investors Mark Lazary and Wesley Edens for a record $550 million. The deal included provisions for contributions of $100 million each from Cole and the new ownership group, for a total of $200 million towards the construction of a new downtown arena. During sale discussions, it was revealed that Hansen and Baumer had expressed interest in purchasing the team for more than $600 million but had not made a formal offer because of Cole's insistence that the team stay in Milwaukee. In the summer of 2015, the state of Wisconsin and city of Milwaukee agreed to help fund a new arena to replace the BMO Harris Bradley Center, and construction began in June 2016. The new arena, the Fiserv Forum, was completed in August 2018, with the Bucks also signing a 30-year lease with the city of Milwaukee. <laughs> Atlanta Hawks On January 2, 2015, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that Atlanta Spirit, then owners of the Atlanta Hawks, would put the team up for sale. Initially, only majority owner Bruce Levinson would put his stake in the team up for sale, however, the remaining minority owners announced that they would sell their stakes as well. On January 6, 2015, the Seattle Post-Intelligencer reported that Chris Hansen and film producer Thomas Tull the latter a minority owner of the NFL's Pittsburgh Steelers would put in separate bids to acquire the Hawks and move them to Seattle. 
However, the NBA stated that the Hawks were to remain in Atlanta as a condition of their sale. Additionally, any attempt to move the Hawks would have incurred a $75 million penalty from the city of Atlanta and Fulton County for breaking the Hawks' lease at Phillips Arena before 2017. The Hawks were sold to a group led by Tony Ressler on June 24, 2015. Topic. Future arena talks On May 2, 2016, the Seattle City Council voted 5–4 against vacating a section of Occidental Avenue South, which connected property purchased by Hansen and was deemed critical to siting a future arena. The vote was seen as a significant setback to the Memorandum of Understanding between Hanson, the city and King County, which ran through November 2017. On October 25, 2016, Chris Hansen announced he will fund the arena without public funding. On November 14, 2016, Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson announced that he would be investing in the NBA arena effort. However, the original deal would ultimately expire on December 3, 2017. Nevertheless, Hansen plans to keep the land owned in the Seattle Stadium District until a commitment for a new Seattle Supersonics franchise occurs, especially in the event a potential backup plan becomes warranted. Topic: <laughs> Key Arena Renovations. While talks of building a new arena were underway, there were also talks from another group of investors on renovating the Supersonics' former home, the Key Arena. One of the investors is Tim Lewicke, co-founder of the Oak View Group. On December 4, 2017, one day after the deal with Soto investor Chris Hansen expired, the Seattle City Council voted 7-1 approving the renovation of the Key Arena, with one person not available for voting that day. While the renovation is considered to have a main focus on fitting the new expansion team for the National Hockey League NHL, interest for the revival of the Supersonics still remains a distinct possibility with the renovated arena. However, while Hansen and his fellow investors still feel having a future arena should be considered as a backup plan for the future of the Supersonics, they fully support the renovation and would be right beside the Oak View Group in cheering the team on moving forward if the plan on acquiring an NBA team becomes successful. Renovations of Key Arena into Seattle Center Arena began in 2018, a day after NHL approval of the new Seattle franchise with the renovations planned to be fully completed by the beginning of the 2021-22 NBA and NHL seasons. Topic: <laughs> Season by season records. Topic: Home Arenas. Key Arena, formerly Seattle Center Coliseum, 1967 to 1978, 1985 to 1994, 1995 to 2008. The Kingdom, 1978 to 1985. Tacoma Dome 1994-1995 during Key Arena remodel. Topic: <inaudible> Uniforms. The Seattle SuperSonics first uniforms had Sonics displayed in a font that was also used by the Cincinnati Royals, now the Sacramento Kings. 
The road jerseys were green and had the lettering displayed in yellow coloring, where the home uniforms were white and had the lettering green. In 1995, the Supersonics changed their uniforms adding red and orange, removing yellow, to their new jerseys that would last six seasons. It displayed the new Sonics logo on the front and their alternate logo on the shorts. The home uniforms had green stripes on the right side of the jersey and shorts, while the green road jersey had red stripes. The final Supersonics uniforms were worn from the 2001–02 NBA season through the 2007–08 NBA season. They were commissioned by owner Howard Schultz for design by Seattle design agency Hornall Anderson. The home jerseys were white with green and gold trim, displaying Sonics across the chest. Road uniforms were dark green with white and gold accents, with Seattle across the chest. The alternate uniform was gold with green and white trim, again with Sonics arched across the chest. These uniforms were a nod to a similar style worn from the 1975–76 season through the 1994–95 season. Topic. Rivalries The Supersonics were traditional rivals with the Portland Trail Blazers because of the team's proximity. The rivalry had been dubbed the I 5 rivalry in reference to Interstate 5 that connects the two cities, which are only 174 miles apart. The rivalry was fairly equal in accomplishments, with both teams winning one championship each. The all-time record of this rivalry is 98-94 in favor of the Supersonics. The Supersonics were rivals of the Los Angeles Lakers, particularly due to the team's long-standing pairing in the Pacific Division of the Western Conference. The Lakers' sustained success meant regular season games often impacted NBA playoffs seedings, with the teams matching up head-to-head -head for numerous playoff battles. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Players. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Retired numbers. Notes. One also head coach from 2000 to 2005. Two head coach during 1969 to 1972 and 1977 to 1985. Topic: Basketball Hall of Famers. Notes. One in total, Wilkins was inducted into the Hall of Fame three times, as player, as coach and as a member of the 1992 Olympic team. Two in total, Ewing was inducted into the Hall of Fame twice, as player and as a member of the 1992 Olympic team. Three inducted posthumously. Four also served as assistant coach 2003 to 2007. Five also served as head coach 1998 to 2000. Topic: FIBA Hall of Famers. Topic: State of Washington Sports Hall of Fame Topic Head Coaches Topic General Managers
Topic: High points. Topic: Individual leaders. Topic: Franchise leaders. Points scored regular season as of the end of the 2007-08 season. Other statistics regular season as of the end of the 2007-08 season. Topic: Individual awards. Topic. See also Bob Blackburn, late primary play-by-play -play broadcaster, the voice of the Seattle Supersonics, 1967–1992 Kevin Calabro, primary play-by-play -play broadcaster, 1987–2008 the Weedle, team mascot, 1978–1985 Squatch, team mascot, 1993–2008 Save Our Sonics, grassroots organization dedicated to preventing the team's move from Seattle in 2008 Sonics Gate, a 2009 feature documentary chronicling the Supersonics history, sale and relocation Sonics Arena, a proposal led by American hedge fund manager Chris R. Hansen to build a new multipurpose arena in the neighborhood south of downtown Seattle List of relocated National Basketball Association teams <laughs>